Who can read that? Oh, come on. Hello and welcome to another Whiskey Trials. Tonight, today, this morning, whenever you might be watching this, I will be tasting the Talisker 10 year old. Now, if you follow me and you, you've seen the, the previous Whiskey Trials, you know that I keep bashing on about the Talisker Sky. I really like it. The Talisker Sky is amazing. It's been on special for a while in my local local sup supermarket. So it's been at 25 quid. And it's so good. It's really nice. So <clears throat> I saw the Talisker 10-year-old. Uh, um, I'm struggling to think of what I paid for it. I can find out. I'll, I'll get wee jock to tell you. Um, it will definitely be below 30 quid though because that's kind of what I've been doing is like getting stuff that's below 30 quid. Everything I've purchased so far on the Whiskey Trials has been below 30 quid apart from yeah, the Glendronach but that's because I didn't buy it. I think that's 40 quid. Um, yeah everything else has been pretty much around the, the 30 quid mark uh, on a deal on Amazon or in the supermarket or something. And and uh, Talisker's uh, Talisker's been a, a real a real eye opener for me. I have to say because the Talisker Sky was one of my gateways to Laphroaig, so it it helps me on my way to be able to handle a Laphroaig. So I had no qualms whatsoever in purchasing the ten year old to give it a blast. And that's just what I'm about to do. But I can tell you. As you can see, I've already <laughs> been doing my usual and and tasting it and going on going through the journey. This is um <clears throat> one of the things I've, I've been discussing actually, and I'd like everybody's feedback. So if you're watching this video, please tell me, would you like to see the unboxings of the 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 whiskey and the first taste, or like me, are you happy that when I review a whiskey, I'm normally below half or you know I've just got the last couple of nips left because for me um, to really get to know a bottle of whiskey you kind of go through this journey or hopefully you go th it takes you on this journey through the bottle and it's a it's a good journey for you it's a nice it's a nice trip um, some of them don't do that so much um, but this is so please please just tell me in the comments whether you want to see me doing the unboxings and doing the first nip and then then I have to come back and do the second nip or third nip or whatever or whether you prefer it when I've actually done a good few nips and I've got right down here and essentially I kind of know what I'm talking about a bit more but you know maybe I've forgotten what it was like up there I don't know um, but let's just get into this Talisker it's um Looks good. Talisker. It's from Sky, of course. It's the only distillery on Sky. I believe. And it's definitely got that Talisker kind of smell. I reckon I could pick out a Talisker now with this smell. There's a few, like the, the Glen Murray I said before. I think if I... If you gave me a range of whiskies, I reckon I could potentially pick out the, the Glen Murray. Um, but the Talisker does have a, a certain kind of smell to it. And, you know, it's like I said in the other episode, it is one of these ones that's a bit more smoky, it's a bit more peaty, it's a bit more medicinal, uh, it's a bit more punchy. What's this one? Is it uh, like the... Uh, 45.8 yeah I think that's the same as the Talisker Sky it's just down there but I'm pretty sure that's the same and the weird thing that I'm finding is that I'm very much drawn to Talisker at the moment 
I've got a wee shelf where I've got my whiskies. And when I go through for a wee dram, more often than not, I've been reaching for this. Or if I've got a Talisker or Sky, I've been reaching for that. Over. Some other very nice ones. You know, like the Glen Murray 12, uh, the Strathyla 12. Um, yeah, other 12 year olds. I've got the Lefroig Select as well. Um, it's it's one of those ones where I'm like I think it's when you, you know that you you can't you feel like a whiskey you know, it's been a hard day or you're just like it gets to that point or it's it's the a wee dram before bed or whatever, whatever you like to do I think sometimes you just want something that just gives you that wee bit of a wee bit of a punch that wee bit of a an awakening of the of the mouth and what I've been finding is that since I've been taking this journey through through the different malts and whatnot that sometimes um, the this the kind of more sweeter ones and or, or the the, the non-peated and the non-smoky ones um, they've not quite been doing that um, and this for me is like the it's such a it's such a happy balance. Like I still find the Lefroig too oily, uh, a little bit too oily, and maybe a bit too peaty and a bit too smoky for me. Um, but this is like some kind of happy medium when when I don't want to just go with what my normal taste buds say, or or what what what's my comfort zone or. Or, or what I'm used to, or, or what I normally like. Uh, you know, sometimes you just don't want like a, a sweet, or a sweetie, or, or something like that. You, you kind of just want something maybe a bit more savoury, a bit more edgy. And the Talisker, for me, is, is that whiskey, it's that, it's that go-to one. And I've been picking it up more and more. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm fully, fully hoping that sometime in the future I'm going to be handling you know, the older Lefroigs and Lagavulins and and uh, maybe our bags and smokeheads or whatever. Um a lot a lot easier. Um But the the funny thing about Talisker on the nose is that it's it's got like a sort of definite smell to it, but I I'm not sure I'm not sure how like amazing it is! It's not um, like over the top wow, or like because it's got the smokiness and the peatiness. A lot of that comes through, um, and it kind of takes away maybe some of the the more fruitier notes that some of the others have. It's still got hints of hints of something there. But you know, it's 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 definitely moves away from the kind of Christmassy cake ones, the 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 dark red fruits that I that I tend to enjoy, and I think that's a good thing. I'm actually really happy that I'm I've found this and that I'm that I've definitely fallen in love with Talisker um, as a as a distillery. They're they're doing stuff that is great for me because um, it counters what I normally like. And that's, I think, what you need. You need, you need that little bit of balance with whiskey. You want, you don't want to be drinking. Uh, you don't want to be going for your favourite kind of taste all the time. You want to mix it up a little bit. That's, that's a definite. And for, you know, you you, you want that anyway. But, you know, they say variety is the spice of life. <clears throat> and I agree to that to a certain extent. But, yeah. You definitely have to expand your whiskey taste buds. So if there's anybody watching this right now that was like me and just uh, stuck to the kind of sweeter ones, the sherry cask ones, um, Christmas cakey kind of tasting and smelling ones, branch out. Just do it. And if you're going to do it, Talisker's a great option. Bowmore as well, but you know, for me, Talisker. I'd pick a Talisker over a Bowmore, I think. And I've just done like two Battle of the Twelves. And this is a 10.
And if you ask me right now which one I'd pick, like between all those 12s I have piled up and this 10, it, it would be the Talisker, I think. It's, it's, it's that good. And this, the, the, the Talisker Sky, I don't know if it's far away, you know, it's, it's such a good expression. It really is. They've really nailed it with that one. And I had the, I had the storm. And the good thing about the expressions is that they can mix, you know, they can mix what they like into it from their own distillery. So they can get a real complexity going with the expressions. So I had this, I had a conversation about whether age statements matter and whether age statements are going to become obsolete. Because eventually what it comes down to is it comes down to taste over... Um, like ponciness or uh, some kind of upper crust ideal of what whiskey should be, right? Because if I say to you, or not even if I say to you, if you taste a Talisker 10 and you taste the, the, the Talisker Storm or Sky and you find the expressions better than the core uh, age statement ones, then you know what does that what does that tell people who I mean this is this is the way the the whiskey industry is moving it's all about it's all about the expressions I think to be fair you know the uh, more and more the age statement ones will become less and less kind of popular because these expressions can can bring can actually bring a lot more they can bring much more on the nose and they can bring much more on the palate unless you've really nailed uh, you know, some kind of, I mean, I mean, everybody gets get, gets their favourite, I suppose, as well. So you you kind of uh, it goes with generations. So perhaps the older generation, once they shuffle off the mortal coil, as it were, then the people that have grown up with the expressions, that'll be more about the expressions and less about the age statements. It's an interesting thing to think about, and I definitely think that's where the the whiskey industry is heading. Um, I I still like the age statements. There's something nice about the age statements. Um, to know, uh, I guess it's like a romantic kind of thing, a romantic notion, in terms of you know that something that you're drinking is is ten years old, um, minimum. I mean, of course, it could there could be older. This this could be a, essentially a blend as well within Talisker. This could have 12, 15, whatever year old in it. So it's it's a nice notion and it's something that I've been thinking about with this whole age statement thing because some of the expressions are just absolutely amazing. Um, there's obviously some really old whiskies uh, or you know old patches going into these expressions. And we just don't know. You just don't know what's going in it. Because, like, these distilleries have been, like, holding on to stuff for years. I mean, they've got they've got casks that'll be, like, 50-plus years old. So if they just... If, if you imagine, right, they've got one cask that's, like, 50 years old. So they can either bottle that up, uh, maybe have, I don't know, a few hundred bottles... Or maximum a thousand or something, say, from various casks, and they could sell that at X amount of thousands of pounds per bottle, or they could come out with a new expression and add that to it, knowing that they've got more in the pipeline that they can add to this expression in the future, and gain fans gain drinkers of this expression that are willing to buy it at x amount of pounds now some of these expressions are not they're not cheap and the reason they're not cheap is probably because there's some there's some really decent malts going into them i don't know i don't know enough about the industry i, I need to get my i need to get my my head in there and and uh, speak to a few people and and see what's what's going on I, I, it's definitely a really good po talking point um where where the industry's heading in terms of expressions and and core age statement kind of ranges, um, but getting back.
back to the task or it's the ten year old is just it's it's really good. It's so good. It's not too smoky, it's not too PT, you know, it is one of those ones that if you're a bit scared of it, then this is I feel this is a good this is a good gateway. This is this is the first step I think. It's got the weediness, there's a, an underlying sweetness that then brings in this nice mellow smoke, some of the peat, and it just leaves you with that glow, that nice feeling going down in your chest. It's, it's so good, it really is. Um, it's just it's just right for me. Um, like I said, the 45.8, I think that really helps. I get... I get the more I drink whiskey, the more I kind of get a little bit annoyed when they just do the base forty percent because that's what Scotch has to be um, by law. It has to be forty percent proof, and that's it. Um, so when they just do the bare minimum, you know for a fact that it's because they've just done that bare minimum and they've watered it down to that point, or they've they've you know they've made it um, they've diluted it enough so that they can maximise what they've got. Whereas obviously the guys at guys at Talisco, they're not they're not doing that because the this one is forty five point eight. The the expressions are forty five point eight, so they're putting that little bit extra in, um, and I really appreciate that because what it does for me is it gives that little bit of extra special glow feelingness, you know. And obviously it's because there's a little bit of extra alcohol there, but it means one that you don't need so many nips. Uh, it, it means too that it's got that it's got much more of an impact. So there's that much there's much more of that initial kind of wow feeling of once you've had that couple of nips, that warming glow that I'm always talking about. And it's just it's just much more when you just got that little bit extra. Um, you know, everybody else is at forty percent Smirnoff, White Mackay, all that stuff's forty percent. There's nothing special about that. Just, just tweaking it over that, uh, especially this, at, at the 45 point is really good. Um, and I've got, I've got another one just now, which I said that I would be doing uh, trials on the Glen Glasser, and that I believe one of them. I'm going, to, I'm going to review two of them, but one of them is the one that I actually have. I tasted the other one over New Year, and the one that I have, I believe, is about like fifty percent. Uh, which it's it's one of those ones where you might you kind of just want to leave it a little bit, especially on the nose. You kind of want to leave it so it settles down a little bit in the glass. But this one, the Talisker at forty-five point eight, is it's it's almost perfect. It really is. I'm so surprised that I'm, I'm going on about Talisker so much. It's it's been such a surprise to me. I just it's so good. I'm I'm really enjoying it. I don't think I I now know. Uh, you know, people talk about like their core collection and, and what they wouldn't be without. And I really I now know that I cannot be without Talisker. It's that good. And this is coming from somebody that likes, you know. The, the sweeter space sides, the, uh, the sherry cast finished East Highlands and, and all the rest of it. So, uh, kudos to, to Talisker, it really is a, an absolute triumph. And do you know what? It's, I'm, I'm going to go visit. It's obviously, it's, well, somewhere I've never been, and it's obviously a good, a good distance away from me, but. Um, not that far. I can drive it and I can get a ferry on through or there's a wee bridge I think. Yay. So I'm going. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have a wee holiday in Sky because because of because of Talisker. All because of Talisker. Magic. It's you know the only thing I've got against Talisker is the is the branding. 
I quite like the boxes and stuff. I'm gonna, well, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Here we go. Right. There is the Talisker Sky. Excellent whiskey. Let's just check that it's, it's 45.8 as well. Um, a compelling task for all smoky sweetness with a spicy edge, blah, blah. A lot of them have that, I think. They've got that spicy kind of finish to them. It's not it's not necessarily the peatiness. It, I, I kind of... It's, a, it's almost a pepperiness that leads on to that slight medicinal flavour. It's... It's so good. I, I really enjoy it anyway. But this is this is one of the things that gets me about Talisker is like Who can read that? Come on. Look, you've got all this space that you could be doing something with. I mean nobody cares about the blue sky on the back, right? I mean you fill it up with the the, uh, the brand on the front. But it's the it's got this white writing. On a blue background, and it's got like a little bit of a bordering, a border with a black rounded rounded text, and I kind of got a squint to uh, to read it. I mean, I know my eyes aren't the best, but it's just it's just not good. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I want that one. Made by the sea, indeed. Very very nice, indeed. And it does actually have that saltiness, which I miss from the old pony. There is definitely that sea-going, piratey smell and taste to it. You just stick your nose in it and you're just like, I could be by the sea. I could be about to go on a voyage with the, you know, you know I'm taking some rum... Or I'm taking some whiskey, or I'm taking some salt meat. I'm taking whatever I'm taking to some far-flung place, or maybe I'm just going to the mainland. Who knows? But yeah, there's a there's there's enough punch there that makes you think that maybe I'll just raise the pirate flag, fire my cannons, and, and take over a ship or two. Um, one thing I don't know about Talisker actually is whether it takes uh, whether it uses the um, the caramel E one fifty additive thing. And I don't know if I can check this in my whiskey bible. So massive thanks to my uh, business partners who got me the Jim Murray's whiskey bible twenty nineteen. Um, I have to say I'm kind of ignorant to who people are and the in the whiskey industry. I'm just doing this because I like doing it and that's that. But I am oh, what's going on? I want ST. Let's just find the tasker here. Oh, gone too far. Gone too far. Cause there's just it's this really tiny writing as well. Wait a minute. Yeah. Really tiny writing. Tomato. I need to get some of that. I don't know how to say that. Tomato. I always want to say tomato, but I guess it's tomatin. 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 Maybe I'm a foreigner at heart. There you go. Uh, Talisker. Here we go. It is uh, Diageo. So, like I said in the previous trials, if it's Diageo, it does have that certain kind of colour. It probably does have that additive. Um, so it's saying... Yeah, so Jim Murray agrees with me. He says it is a stupendous malt. Well, a quite stupendous malt. Uh, to be enjoyed at any time. Um, but at night especially. It's a bit weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, so it's not your 10 o'clock tram in the morning, Jim. What, what do you advise for the morning? What's your breakfast dram, Jim Murray? Tell me. Um, the deadening caramel that had crept into recent bottlings of the 10-year-old has retreated.
Yeah. It it does have a sweetness, but do you know what? There's this is why I like it is that it doesn't have that kind of complexity of sweetness, or maybe it, it, it does in a way, but it's 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 balanced with that smoke and the peat. So that's and that coupled with the the higher ABV gives you a different experience, and you're not you're not you're not drinking it because of the sweetness. Um, that's maybe more of an underlying thing. But if you think about the sweetness when you're drinking it, it's definitely there. It's not a, it's not a bitter uh, malt at all. Uh, I mean, you, sometimes I find that with the the smokier ones, is you get that slightly bitterness with the smoke. But they've they've just got this balance just right between the sweetness and the smoke and the peat. It's just. And the ABV is just, it is like, I don't know, it's, it's almost perfect, I dare say. It's one of those ones that just makes you feel nice. It makes you feel like, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm being weird about it, but it kind of makes me feel like an adult, a little bit. I know that sounds completely stupid, um, but by adult, I mean um, there's a level of maturity to it, and I think to appreciate it, you need to have a level of maturity. Uh, so yeah, in that respect, maybe it isn't stupid. So it's a maturity thing. I think it's part of your journey. So if you're watching this and you're like, you've been enjoying the likes of Glen Murray, uh, the likes of Old Pulteney, the likes of Dalwini, the likes of Strathyla, Craig and Moore even, maybe, who knows um, what other ones you've been trying. Uh, maybe even a Glen Drone. Move on to Talisker. Expand those taste buds. Feel mature. You know, I kind of, you know, it's, it's like a, I kind of want to pick up the pipe. And uh, although I don't smoke anymore, it might be quite nice just to pair it with a bit of tobacco smoke. I don't know. Much to uh, my other half's uh, rage. Oh, righty. Uh, oh, what, what, what's this I've got? I have here whiskey chocolat. Whiskey mellow milk with a slug of smooth honeyed 10 year old single malt. Oh, where's the single malt from? Uh, it's a full bodied space side malt, apparently, with notes of toffee and rich fruitcake. Oh, surely it's got to be a blend on I think. Actually, I don't actually know if I'm going to this space out. Oh my god! It's so rustly! Alright, how much whiskey is actually in it? Let's look at the ingredients. Uh, what do we see? Let's see how much whiskey is in it. Where is it? No. It doesn't say. Oh, wait. Wait! It does say, hey, 12% whiskey. Hmm, it's not bad for a chocolate like. Hey, ah, open it, get the noise over. Look at them, they look like uh, little weird boobs with little weird nipples. <laughs> Balls. So obviously that's how they inject it because they create the little two halves and then a little machine comes down and injects it with whiskey and then seals it. You can see that little bit there. Alright, let's go. 
normally I don't like stuff like this. It's got a definite twang to it. I'd like to know where the whiskey came from. But the chocolates were made by Hotel Chocolat Limited, London, England. Mm -hmm. So, it's annoying that they don't give props to the distillery, really. That would, be, would have been nice. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't pay for that. Or maybe they paid more for the privilege of getting a uh, white label. But, you know, if I made a, a whiskey chocolate, I think I would have uh, given props to Talisker. Do you know what? I think a Talisker would go really well in a chocolate. That, that kind of smoky, uh, slightly medicinal note would go well with a, with a chocolate. Because it, it's not an overbearing sweetness with these. What I tend to find with the, the whiskey sweeties, the whiskey chocolates, is that they can be. Like they're trying to be. I, I get it. The, it's a chocolate, so it's meant to be sweet, right? And they're pairing it with some kind of toffee noted Speyside. Which again, it's great if, like, it's, you like stuff that's really, really sweet, but I mean, I guess the, the chocolate they're using is already sweet. Although it's quite a dark chocolate because put a bit of cocoa in there. But it'd be nice to have a, be nice to have a talisman. Well, I wonder if the distilleries do much of that. You know, their own branded chocolates or something. If they get in a higher in a, a chocolatier and uh, and get the get them to make up some limited edition chocolates. I think that would sell really well. Alright Talisker, if you're listening, hire a, a well-known, not even a well-known, but just a, a chocolatier and get some chocolates made. That'd be good. I'd buy them. Hmm, interesting. Just go out and buy a, go out and buy the Talisker Sky and buy, buy the Talisker 10. I'd, I'd strongly urge you to always have a Talisker in your collection. I'm never going to be without one now. And please don't change it, Talisker, if you're watching. Do not change what you're doing. I mean, really, I've only just started my journey with Tasker as well, so it's really in an interesting one. And I suppose it's the same with Glendronach and a lot of them. Uh, do you know what? There's so many whiskies and there's so many that I haven't tried. I think, I think what's holding me back is the expense of it, because it is quite expensive to do what I'm doing. I'm, I mean, I'm just buying all these myself. And... You know, obviously I'm waiting for the deals on Amazon and whatnot so I can make sure that I'm below 30 quid for each bottle. But it's interesting that I've only had a Talisker Sky, pretty much, and the Storm, okay, and this 10. And I'm totally in love with Talisker. They are amazing. And But I'm looking down at my boxes here, as you can see, and I'm looking at the old Pulney. And I'm like, I've had the old Pulte 12, and I've had the 15, and that's it. Uh, but, I mean, I loved the old Pulte 15. It was it was magic when I had it in the pub. I've had it three three times, at least, in the pub, and it was just so good. But again, now I don't know if they've changed that with the the branding that and the fact that they've changed the 12. Uh, but I'm looking at all the other ones that I've had, and I'm like, do you know what, I... I don't know. I don't know how many of each one that I've had. Not not many. The Dalwini 15. That's the only one I've had. I don't know any other Dalwinis. Uh, the Glendronach. Obviously everybody knows I've had the 12 and the 15. And I keep going on about the 12 because it's amazing. And I was slightly disappointed by the 15 because the 12 was so good that I put the 15 up on this pedestal. And it didn't quite, it didn't quite make it. Make my... Uh, 
my pedestal. Uh, Glen Murray, yeah, I've had a few Glen Murrays, but well, I've had all the basic ones, the basic expressions, but the the age statements. I've only had the twelve year old. So yeah, so many to go. I mean, I shared a a post on my Facebook channel, and it was just this news article that I've been reading that there's 130 distilleries in Scotland now operating with more, um, you know, going to start in 2019. And I was like, it's, it's amazing. And, and you look at these books, I mean, you look at, look at this book, this book, the Whiskey Bible, Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible, look at it, it's tiny writing. And it's just, it's completely jam-packed. There is actually other whiskies and stuff with that as well. I think I saw something somewhere that said maybe over 700, maybe over 800, along those lines, whiskies, Scotch whiskies. And I'm like, I've just got, I'm, I'm really just scratching the surface here. I've got so much more to go. And it just, it's, it, you know, a little bit daunting at some points and it's great at other points because I'm like well I'm never going to run out of content I'm always going to have a bottle of whiskey here that I can talk about which is great which is what I wanted to and you know it's fun just sitting here talking about whiskey um the the only thing is that I, I want to get a bit deeper I want to get into the whole you know all the stuff that I've been talking about the industry things and the future and, and all the rest of it and it's just really daunting when you've got that many whiskies to oh, to kind of talk about and to know and it's, there's a lot of information going about about this kind of stuff or there's a lot of information that you, you may need to semi-retain and yeah my my old whiskey adult brain cannot take such information I'm good at remembering some kind of information, but I don't know if uh, whiskey's one of them. I'll tell you what I will remember though, I will remember that Talisker is a whiskey I like. I'm surprised it's Diageo in a way, but you know, I don't want it to be like, I don't want to have any kind of bias against companies, I just, I see them as like this big corporate entity which Potentially, I don't like just because they're a big corporate entity, but you know, perhaps at their heart, they uh, uh, they're not a big corporate entity, and they've got uh, you know, they're more about relationships and they're more about the whiskies, and they realise what they've got, and they want to encourage that, and they don't want to you know spoil it, mix it up too much, or or be. Uh, just be too cool, calm, collected, business-like and horrible about it, you know. I hope they realise that when they buy these distilleries there's so much passion and it's about the people that that are involved in it and, you know, they've got their own ideas and I hope they embrace all that kind of stuff. I'm sure they do. I don't know. And this is the thing. I, I, I really like to get involved, talk to some distilleries and find out who's who's good and who's not in terms of employers and all the rest of it. Because, like I said in the previous Whiskey Trials, I am not about blowing smoke up anybody's arses. It's not my thing. I don't make my money from whiskey. And uh, I potentially never will, I don't know. Maybe the whiskey trials will turn into something, maybe it won't, but I can guarantee you it will always be something that is true. And I'll stand by that completely because that's me and I don't want it to become anything else. So, thank you again for watching and please tune in to the next episode. Please subscribe. 
if you're on YouTube. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, please go to YouTube and subscribe. <laughs> I'd said in my last episode, I just need 500 people.